Welcome back to Contemporary Black Voices. Okay, this is the hot topic subject, and so get your you got your butt back some butts and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I left mine in the car. Right, so I'm gonna bring some boxing gloves and put it right here, you know, for hot topics. Uh, okay, our hot topic for this week is what happened in the United States House of Representatives, and you would have thought that was the German Reichstag in the 1930s, the way some of those, uh, uh, I would say it, white congressmen were acting when they removed uh, Congresswoman Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee. So I, I know, because I think the, the four of us, mm -hmm. we, we think a lot alike, and I, I'm sure that you all's feelings were the same as mine, my wife, I picked up something. She said, don't you throw that through my television. <laughs> some of those people, some of the things they were saying. So what say you all? Uh, I want to know what did she say that was so horrible that was worse than some of those representatives who participated in the January 6th insurrection. You know, why are they still allowed to be on committees? She wasn't involved in any insurrection. In fact, some of those insurrectionists, you know, were trying to hide from their own, right? You know, folks. Scared. And scared. it's almost like they're saying, <clears throat> "It's okay if we've got somebody that we want to out that's against Jews, but if you're against mm -hmm. America, that's okay." Mm -hmm. I see. No, they played a clip of Kevin McCarthy saying that we won't, we don't, we're not going to let Bloomberg and uh, Soros. It was. It was. It was. It was three billionaires. Soros, Soros Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Yeah, I remember that. They, they, yeah. They, we're not going to let them buy this election. Yeah. So it was. It was the same. Same stereotypical tropes that uh, that they're accusing her. Uh, that he uh, he said it directly. We're not going to let these three Jewish billionaires buy this election. And, and what did that have to do with remo removing that lady from her? Because she's Muslim. Basically. And so Ilhan, uh, Ilhan Omar is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Used was. to be. Was. Used to, was until they moved her. <laughs> so her comments, uh, her comments were about uh, Israel, which uh, as a member of the committee, she has a right to, uh, to uh, question. As, as a free American citizen, she has a right to, uh, to express her opinion and, and, and to voice questions. It's her job uh, to voice those questions. And so her questions were, uh, about uh, Israeli influence uh, within within the uh, within the House. Her other question was, um, uh, well, "What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing at all. Undue influence over Undue the influence. Palestinians. <laughs> so I mean, well, here's the, Palestinians the deal: Palestinians need to get right. their influence. I I, th I think what it is is this. So if uh, we America claims to be Israel's closest ally is there uh, israel's america's closest ally in the middle east yeah and so if you can't talk honestly with your friends who can you talk honestly with or about and so i think that you 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 owe it to israel to tell them the truth tell them the truth about their policies and so if we're going to talk about this let's talk about israeli israel's policies and so uh and i will go there and i have no problem going there israel is a terrorist state and i say this with, and I'm gonna uh, and without without any kind of qualification. The reason I say this is because without any qualification. No, because I the reason I say this but is because no I'm gonna say this. So the reason I say this is because they Israel cuts the power off routinely, depending on how Netanyahu feels when he wakes up in the morning. They cut the power off to the Gaza Strip. When you cut the power off, and they control all access to the Gaza Strip. When you cut the power off to the Gaza Strip, people die. People mm. who are on life support, people who are on lung, uh, lung machines, breathing machines, people who had, need dialysis, they cut the power off. People in the hospitals, they wow. die. As long as they want to. Yeah, that's part of their justification process also. As long as they want to. And so they control Are you fuel. sure? I'm positive. They control the fuel that goes in there so they can't use backup generators to power their hospital. People die. Their sewage backs up because there's no electricity to power the plants. So what you're saying people die. You, unqualified. So <laughs> that they're a terrorist state. They're a terrorist state because they're killing they're innocent killing people. innocent people. If that's not a terrorist state, what is a terrorist state? Okay. All right. 
Let's get back to Omar. We got a little off here. Uh, That's with, no. This is what she was. This is what she was saying. Her statement was, "I pray that God. I pray that Allah exposes the the evil that Israel is doing." That was her statement. Do you think that's an appropriate statement for a congresswoman to, to say? Yeah, absolutely. I pray that Allah. Absolutely. Yeah. To I pray that God exposes what these people are doing. Wait, why do you think it's not appropriate? I didn't say I didn't. No, no but you asked that question. No, question. no which, but I think I think, I think it is, I think it is an appropriate so. statement. You know what I mean? Because again, your friends have to be able to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And if your policies are that or, or terroristic policies where you're killing innocent people, then yeah, you know what I'm saying? She has, it out. we give Israel billions of dollars a year. Right. And if those billions of dollars are supporting a military industrial complex right. in Israel that is responsible for killing innocent people, I'm sorry about moving my hands. I'm, <laughs> I, I need to bring the duct tape. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you have the right. If you if you're uh, on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and you know that the, uh, you're supporting a military that's con killing innocent civilians, you have the right to question where those Amer American tax well, dollars are going. Question. The way you put it, she did not question. She wants. She, she said, I hope statement. that it's exposed. Yeah. She that's hopes that it's exposed. That's a definitive statement. That is a so what, okay. Is that well, wrong? that is a definitive yeah. statement. Is that wrong? Well, uh, let me. Okay, somebody gets up there mm -hmm. and says, "I pray to God mm -hmm. that He exposes these colored people to all the wrong they're doing." What mm -hmm. would we do if someone? What would we do? It, I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what, <laughs> and so here's the deal: is, is it a true statement? El I, Sharpton, I, and well, here's the deal. For two days, and then it'll go says, back to normal. If, she would, if someone gets up there and says, I pray to God that he exposes how these black folks are not unified and are not using their economic dollars to come together and make change, then what can we say about the truth? If she's praying to God that the truth is exposed. I have well, no well, problem well, with well, that. My only point is, we would respond against it. You know that. If it's you, the you, truth, you, what can you say? Truth, we would respond against that. And mm. that's what the Jewish community was doing. No. Uh, let me finish. Mm. Let me finish. You, you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm getting ready to say? You already said nothing. I'm just saying that the Jewish community did not say anything. <laughs> they have not said a damn thing about it. In the, mm -hmm. in, in, in the closed rooms, they did. Mm -hmm. In closed rooms, they did. Okay? And I think they had a Jewish uh, congressman who introduced the resolution to get her removed and then you had i mean, some democrats even criticized her for what she said you know we have we have politicians who here who really aren't educated we have some uneducated politicians oh, yes and uh the thing that based on that statement you you were saying is that the u.s goes hard after china for humanitarian issues mm -hmm. if this is going on over here yeah. there's, there's there's a there is a contradiction hypocritical being mm -hmm. hypocritical oh, we're, we're, you, you're not questioning the americans mm -hmm. huh? That's beyond question. That's beyond question. <laughs> no, Lord knows I'm not questioning the hypocrisy. But there's, you know, that that, you know, there's something yeah. else. You know, over mm -hmm. here we're gonna complain. Mm -hmm. Over here we're not yeah. gonna complain. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I think I mentioned this in a, in another show. Uh, young Jewish boys in America can go and register and fight with the IDF. Mm -hmm. Right. And then no one questions their loyalty to America. No one questions their American citizenship. Can you imagine a Palestinian American going and registering to fight or, mm -hmm. or, or someone from China, a young Chinese American going and registering uh, and, and serving with the with the with the uh, with the People's Liberation Army and then yeah. coming back over here? He'd be arrested at the airport and charged with espionage. And so there's a difference between the way Israel is treated and the way that everyone else is treated. And so this is my problem. Israel has a veto policy over American jobs. We can't sell an F-35 fighter to anyone without Israel's permission. And those are American jobs that they have a veto power over. Mm. And so when you ask, when you, when, I'm the wrong person Come on, to man. Ask, talk to about Israel because I know the truth. And here's the deal. There, we, we get dewy-eyed over Israel. The Israelis aren't dewy-eyed over Israel or, or, or the land that they live on because a lot of people don't, people don't know Israel wasn't their first choice. Their first choice, it's called the Uganda scheme. 
they were going to take land from the African people north of Nairobi into Kenya. That was their first choice. And so a lot to, of black people don't relocate. know that. To relocate. Mm -hmm. And so here's the deal. They were, we came this close to Africans being today's Palestinians. And so I'm not dewy out over Israel, and I, have, and I understand who they are, and I understand clearly what they are and what they're doing. Um, and so I, 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 I'm, not the, I'm not the one on this subject. Okay. Good point, Kayla. And with let's that being said, <laughs> let's close out with mm -hmm. closing comments. Take a minute. Whatever, anything we talked about today. <laughs> um, no. I, I, again, I just, I think that um, the Republican Party, we know they're, we know uh, they're full of hypocrisy. And so uh, as far as removing uh, Congresswoman Omar, it was, uh, it was a vendetta. It was just something that was promised to their to their base. They followed through on that promise. And I hope that uh, in two years, the Democrats uh, remember that. And I hope the American people remember that. Uh, as far as uh, Israel goes, um, they need we they have outside influence on on U.S. foreign policy, uh, po uh, which directly uh, affects American jobs. Uh, that's the other thing as far as uh, uh, my closing <clears throat> thoughts as far as housing. Um, and uh, we need to be on the lookout. Again, I'm beating this drum. We need to be on the lookout for uh, what we call uh, uh, 21st century uh, redlining and 21st century gentrification. Uh, it is now moving into the digital realm uh, as far as being able to uh, know who you are, who gets what offers, and as far as uh, suppression of, uh, of uh, economic opportunities. And so we do need to be on the lookout for that. Uh, and so I think those are my closing thoughts okay. for today. Doctor. We've had a very interesting show today. We had a very interesting show. We talked about the good, the bad, the ugly, about gentrification. And we started talking about uh, uh, Representative uh, uh, Omar. So closing comments. Things from what I'm seeing, the question, when does gentrification stop? It won't stop. Will changes occur in in the, in in politics only through voting? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to be the broken record. Uh, I say, quit asking for shit and make shit happen. Oh. Okay. Oh. Meaning yeah. that if we talk about gentrification, if we talk about uh, Congressman Omar, whatever it is that we're talking about as black people. What I think we've got to do is to be able to see if we can create something, anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a product, but we've got to be able to come together and to be able to do something. And without that, uh, it's kind of like uh, it says in the Bible, without a vision, the people will perish. Okay. Okay. Another great version of mm -hmm. the contemporary black voices. And we will be back next week with another show that is just as exciting and just as important. In the meantime, that is the four of us telling our story our, our way. way. Mm -hmm.